Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Cassidy Hansen. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager here at the League. Today, I'm excited to welcome you to our first Powers and Duties webinar. This webinar is focusing on the six council member form of government. It will be led by our very own legal director, Jared Tingey. If you have questions, please utilize the Q&A or chat function, and we'll try to answer most of your questions during the webinar or at a later time if we don't get to them. We also will be recording this webinar and posting it on our YouTube channel, so please share this webinar with others in your municipality who may have not been able to make it today. So with that, I'll turn the time over to Jared Tingey. Okay, well, thank you, Cassidy. Um, today's uh, webinar is going to be on the six member council form. We will be doing other uh, webinars for other forms of government and which may or may not apply to you as, as you will see later in the webinar. Um, and if so, uh, just watch for any announcements for those forms of government uh, and, um, and we can connect you there. So uh, why don't we, so you are now a council member, a mayor or an administrator or a staff member Okay, now what? Now, what What do I do now? Um, and that's hopefully what we can answer for you today. Uh, the first thing that you should do is this, stop. Um, hold up and, and reevaluate, okay, what is my powers that I have and what are my duties that I have? And, and that is really important and hopefully we can answer those questions today and uh, help you understand kind of what your lane is and what others lanes are and make sure that, that those distinctions uh, are, are uh, defined. So I want to begin by putting this quote on the screen here. Laws like sausages cease to inspire respect in proportion as we know how they're made. And uh, the reason I wanted to put that up here is because as we look at the history of the form of government and uh, how each form of government came to be, uh, it's important to know that with that, uh, different aspects of different uh, periods of time have influenced other forms of government uh, and including, well, I should say, especially the five and six member council form. And so with that, although uh, there is prior history to 1977, I didn't want to completely bore you with the history. And so we are gonna start with 1977 as, uh, and talk about kind of what the forms were because those will inform us uh, in the future as far as how your six member council uh, works. So in 1977 and all the way up until 2008, the traditional forms were done by class. Uh, plus there were two prior optional forms that were allowed. And so the, the first class city would be a five member commission form. The second class, a three member commission form. The third class city, six member commission form. And so those were all based upon population. And then all towns were a five member commission form. Um, and then there were, the, then there was uh, some forms of government that had, were grandfathered, I guess, continued for available options for cities to uh, to have that as their form of government. The council mayor form, which is also sometimes referred to as a strong mayor form, and operates much like a federal system. Uh, you've got a president or the mayor and the legislative body or the city council, um, Congress. And so that is the council mayor form of government. There, there are a limited number of cities in Utah that are acting under the council mayor form. 
Uh, and similarly, with the council manager form of government, uh, there are very few that still have this form of government. Uh, the council manager, uh, for your awareness, is much like a private corporation where you've got a board of directors and then you've got an executive, someone that uh, has been hired to carry out the executive functions of that governmental entity but the board uh, is the one that really are making the policy decisions whereas the manager is is carrying out the executive functions so with that being said uh, if you do have a different form um, we will have additional information additional webinars coming up to uh, address those different forms as well uh, in 2008, there were some changes. Uh, the council mayor form, uh, the strong mayor, became uh, available in either a five or a seven council member. So uh, you would have the mayor, and separately from the mayor, you would have five council members or seven council members. Uh, you also uh, have a six council member form, six member council form, and you also have a five member council form. The council manager form was discontinued uh, except for those that already had that form of government and were operating under that prior to 2008. So in 2008, the transition looked something like this. All five members were still five members. The three member council uh, turned into a five member council. The six member were, was still a six member. Um, the council mayor form uh, turned into a mayor plus five council members or a mayor plus seven council members. And then a council manager form, uh, which like I said, was uh, at that point after 2008 no longer available. Now, the reason why this is important and why you should care is that although you may, although you have a city manager, that does not mean you have a council manager form of government. Uh, six members and six member council and a five member council and a council uh and so those have uh, a city manager by ordinance only um a council mayor typically they have a chief administrative officer that is very much so acting much like a a uh, a city manager um but they call it a chief administrative officer um and so with that, let me just uh, put a few scenarios on the screen here. Say for example, you have a five, uh, five council members, one of which is the mayor and, and a city manager. Um, the question is, is are you a holdover council manager form, a council mayor form, that has named that chief administrative officer as a city manager or a five member council who has delegated authority to a city manager. What now? Okay, so the, the reason this, uh, this is important is this may be uh, the issue that you may be seeing in your city. What form of government really are we? And there are a few things that you can do to determine what your form of government is, even though it may look much like another form of government, it very well could be a different form of government. So, uh, and, and this is all important because it helps us understand what our lanes are uh, as a mayor, as a city council member, and as a staff member, how do we work with uh, our mayor, our city council, or our city manager? 
And so the, the first question that I would ask is, does your mayor have legislative authority? Can they vote on every single decision? And if they do, and if they have, it's likely that you've got a, uh, a five or six member council. If they do not, and they do not sit on as a, um, a uh, I'm sorry, if, yes, if they do have legislative authority, then it's likely, and, and that they can vote on that council, it is likely that they are a, uh, that they are not a five and six member council because they only can vote in certain situations. Um, the other uh, question that you should ask is who directs your city manager? Is it the mayor or is it the council? Uh, looking back and looking back at your prior ordinances will help you know whether this city manager position is really one that's created by the form of government or whether it's created by ordinance uh, through a five or a six member council. So um, the second scenario you may have is a six council members, a mayor and a city manager. The question is, is are you a holdover council manager or a six member council? And so the, the um, and just to, to the best of the league's knowledge of what is in our records, uh, the only council manager form still remaining uh, prior to 2008 are, or after 2008, are West Valley City, Orem City, Cottonwood Heights, Holiday City, and Bryan Head Town. Uh, to our knowledge, uh, and, and they, they change in different cities, and there's very much so likelihood that we have not caught them. So these are just uh, as a point of reference. Those in the council mayor form of government is uh, currently West Jordan, Logan, Ogden, Marriott Slaterville, Salt Lake City, South Salt Lake City, Taylorsville City, Murray City, Sandy City, and Provo City. But again, you may uh, have changed your form of government to a strong mayor form of government, uh, which we will be having webinars uh, down the road. So as you can see, um, and uh, in a six member council form of government, the legislative and the executive powers are combined. Um, and Unlike the strong mayor form of government where they are separate uh, with a six member council form, they are combined. You've got the mayor who sits as a city council member and the other five council members uh, on the city council. So what I'd like to do, and, and this is uh, hopefully what your city looks like at this point, uh, what I'd like to do is go through the different uh, duties of both a mayor and a city council member and then talk about staff uh, and how the interaction between staff and city council members and the mayor uh, might look and some challenges that may come up that uh, um, by knowing your lane will help your city uh, function uh, more efficient, efficiently and effectively uh, knowing everyone's roles. So with that, uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about, and before we hop into this, uh, these different duties, both those that a mayor shall do and may do and cannot do, I want to uh, put a caveat on all of these duties of a mayor. And the reason why I want to do that is because by ordinance, many, many of these duties, um, and we'll talk about those duties that cannot be taken away from the mayor, but many of these duties can be taken away from the mayor upon a vote of all of the council members, uh, now minus the city, uh, minus the mayor, or 
a majority of those present with the mayor. And, and so these duties are quite flexible when it comes between one city and another city, depending on what ordinance in your city either expands or contracts the duties uh, that are under a six member council form of government. With that being said, uh, what I'd like to do is go now through the things that must be done by a mayor uh, unless they're taken away by the city council. Uh, the first being supervising all the employees and acting as a CEO uh, of that city and appointing one or more administrative assistants to that, uh, to that mayor. Uh, another function that, uh, one that cannot be taken away uh, is chairing and presiding over all council, uh, over all council meetings. Uh, just just uh, to answer a question that I see in the chat, yes, these slides will be available and posted on our website, along with the video and webinar in its, uh, in its fullness. So those will be available to you. Uh, the, the, the next one, ensure that laws are faithfully executed, report any fines or forfeitures that the mayor has remitted uh, and do so to the council. And then uh, let's, let's wait to come back to the voting part, going back up to the top uh, on the right side there, performing all duties prescribed by statute or municipal ordinances or resolutions, report to the council on the condition and needs of the municipality, exercises ceremonial functions for the, for the municipality. And that's one thing that, uh, again, the council cannot take away from the mayor. Uh, the next one, enforce laws and keep the peace and report to the council any pardons made to a person in prison for a violation of a municipal ordinance. The last thing that I, I'd like to talk about is the voting. Uh, the mayor does and is able to vote, but only if there's a tie vote. Now for a six member council form, it's going to be uh, only when five or six members are present, because if there's only four, which would still be a quorum for six uh, to have a meeting, there would not be any tie vote. Um, and so it would be to break a tie, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, the second would be to appoint or dismiss a municipal manager. Um, and so if there, uh, if, if they would like, if the six member council would like to um, have a city manager, then the, the mayor gets to vote on whether or not they appoint that city manager. Um, and then the third, on an ordinance that enlarges or restricts the mayor's powers and duties. So anytime those duties are uh, changed, the mayor will get a vote on the council to either say yay or nay and uh, and will be a participating member of the council. Um, and so those are the things that must be done by a mayor, again, unless they're taken away by the council. The things that can be done by a mayor uh, are these. Uh, they can make recommendations to the council for specific legislation. They can provide with the advice and consent of the council. They can assign or appoint a member of the council to administer one or more departments of the, of the municipality. This happens quite a bit in small cities or towns where there are not many staff members to perform the functions of the city. And so those that are sitting as council members can be assigned, of course, with the advice and consent, with the approval of the city council um, of those duties saying, you know what, we want a council member Cam Cameron Deal to uh, be the department head over public works. And we want uh, Cassidy Hansen to be the council member over uh, streets. 
uh, or water or utilities uh, or over HR functions. And so uh, a municipal manager, uh, I see a, a question here, who is considered a municipal manager? So in this form of government, it would be someone that uh, would not be the mayor, but would be uh, specifically called out in ordinance uh, and creating by ordinance that position as a municipal manager is the same thing as a city manager or a town manager. Uh, and their duties uh, are defined by ordinance. And, and so typically they have a contract with the city, sometimes not, sometimes they are an actual uh, employee of the city. Um, uh, but, but a lot of times those uh, professional uh, and uh, those job duties are associated with a contract that the city or town has entered into. Uh, the next one is uh, that a mayor can call on residents over 21 to assist in enforcing state and municipal uh, laws. The next one, release a person in prison for a violation of municipal, municipal ordinance. I have never seen this done. Uh, it would be uh, very interesting politically uh, to, to do this, um, but uh, it can be done and that uh, the ability to do so is in state code. The next one up at the top right, remit fines and forfeitures. Now something here I want to point out is that fines and forfeitures uh, by definition are not fees. So if you've got a fee for a service, um, those fees are a a, the price of, of obtaining that service. They are not a punishment or a taking away of some property um, like a fine and a forfeiture would be. So this is after a violation of an ordinance that fines and forfeitures can be taken away, much like the punishment, the the jail sentence of a violation of a municipal ordinance. These are not fees. Um, there are other uh, um, sections of the state code that talk about fees and when fees can be uh, uh, modified and revised and the studies that have to go along with that. So uh, just as a clarification, the next one with advice and consent of the council appoint a person to fill a municipal office uh, and uh, appoint a person to fill a vacancy on a commission or a committee of the municipality. So if there's some sort of committee or commission with the advice and consent of the council, they can uh, uh, appoint that person. Now, if the council says, you know what, we do not uh, like the person that you have uh, recommended, and that you've appointed and we are not giving our advice and consent, then the mayor's going to have to go back and to the drawing board and submit someone else's, appoint someone else and, uh, and receive the consent of the council. Uh, the last one is at any reasonable time, examine and inspect the official books, papers, records, or documents of the municipality or its officer, employee, or agency of the, of the municipality. This is uh, something that uh, can happen when there's something that needs to be checked, audited, or reviewed, and the mayor has that authority, again, unless that has been taken away by ordinance. Um, moving on to those things that you can't, cannot do as a mayor, uh, you cannot veto an ordinance, tax levy, or appropriation passed by the council. So unlike a strong mayor form of government that does have that authority uh, to veto a, an appropriation or an ordinance, uh, a mayor in a six-member council form does not have that authority. Um, 
they also uh, cannot uh, do any of those things that have been removed from uh, from the powers by the city council member. Um, there are limitations, as I said before. Uh, the first down, the, the double star there, councils may not take away any of the mayor's legislative or judicial powers or ceremonial functions. So the cutting of the ribbons, the, uh, you know, all of the ceremonial things that a mayor uh, can do, they cannot take those things away. Neither can they take away their legislative power to vote on those limited items of, um, of either expanding or contracting the duties of the mayor um, or hiring a city manager. The second thing being the mayor's position as the chair of the council. And then the last, any ex officio position that the mayor holds, uh, the city council cannot take away those positions. Now, what is an ex officio position? It is another position that is, is uh, based upon whoever the mayor is, that is who uh, that individual will sit in that capacity as an ex officio position. Um, so what happens if the mayor uh, says, you know, um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna act, I'm not gonna do those things, um, and or is absent or is unable to uh, perform those functions. So if they're if they are on vacation, and uh, then there is no chair to council or uh, no chair to sit at the council meeting, uh, the council may elect a, a member of the council to act as the mayor pro. Uh, it's usually pro tem is how it's pronounced. Um, the, the, uh, the first thing they can vote and elect a, and preside a, a person to preside at the council and perform the duties of the mayor. Um, there are things, uh, so moving on to the city council and what they can and cannot do. The city council, uh, exercise, performs, supervises all of those other things that have not already been, been given to the mayor or which have been removed from the mayor and uh, retained by the city council. Um, the second thing is acting as the legislative body. Uh, the city council is are, are, are um, those that can uh, enact policy for the city and provide direction the mayor is the one who carries out those policy considerations and, and uh, acts in that function. So those are, it, it, is, it is very broad on what a city council can do. And we'll talk about, um, we'll expand a little bit about that later in the presentation. And, uh, but their powers are quite large when it comes to a, six member council form of government. I would not say the same thing about a strong mayor form of government. Uh, very different roles, very different duties and, um, and responsibilities and powers. So what, what can a city council do? Um, they can adopt an ordinance removing or reinstating a power, duty, or function of the mayor, again, within those parameters that we've talked about. They can adopt an ordinance delegating any executive or administrative power, duty, or function uh, that the council has. Uh, they can adopt rules and regulations that aren't contrary to state law and which uh, would function, uh, which would help the city function, uh, the operations, the conduct, the business of the municipality, uh, require by ordinance that any or all appointed officers reside in the municipality. So that is something that they can do. Um, and so that 
that there's that close proximity uh, to the city or within the city and uh, close to the city hall. And then uh, providing for filling a vacancy in an elective or appointive office. They can also dismiss a town or city manager. Now, uh, I remind you that oftentimes they have contracts that they have, so beware of that, that uh, there may be a severance package in there. So before the city council uh, does that, they may want to look at uh, the consequences of dismissing a town or city manager. Um, the next is appoint a town or city manager to perform those functions uh, that the council by ordinance uh, delegates to the manager. So again, it's, it's a fluid system when it comes to the six member council forum. And the best thing that you can do is go back and look at the ordinances. If you have a city manager, go and look at the ordinance that creates that position. If you have a mayor that uh, that is performing powers and duties that you believe as a city council member is, is not allowed to do because the city council has taken those powers away, then you need to go back and look at those ordinances to show that those duties and those uh, powers have been taken away. Um, they can also create any office that the city council considers necessary for the government of the municipality um, they can take any action provided for by statute or, or necessarily implied by law. And so here is the, the uh, I would say the whopper of the, the duty or the whopper of the powers. Anything what we call as the necessary and proper clause. And before I go on to that, let me just mention they can also establish fines and penalties for violating ordinances. Um, be aware that there are limitations behind how long a, a uh, violation of an ordinance may be, or how uh, the, the size of the fee, or I'm sorry, the size of the fine or the penalty are, have their own limitations in state code. And we won't get into them uh, during this presentation but we will get into those uh, in later presentations when it talks about further expanding upon those uh, items of code enforcement and, uh, and those types of things. Um, but I do want to talk about the necessary and proper clause. So in, in code, we currently have a clause that says the municipal legislative body may pass all ordinances and rules and make all regulations not repugnant to law necessary for carrying into effect or discharging all powers and duties conferred by this chapter and as are necessary and proper to provide for the safety and preserve the health and promote the prosperity, improve the morals, peace and good order, comfort and convenience of the city and its inhabitants and for the protection of property in the city. Wow, that is a lot of authority to take your city where you would like your city to go as it relates to policy and what your city uh, is doing and the character of your city. Uh, how did we end up there? In the past, through case through through different cases who have that have been taken uh, to court, there was a thing called the Dillon Rule, and uh, at the time there were only those powers. City councils and uh, mayors only had had those powers expressly enumerated in the state code. So if it did not provide the city council the authority to do um, to do, to make land use laws in some sort and fashion, then it couldn't do that. Um, now, uh, under a different case called the Hutchinson case, all powers not otherwise explicitly excluded in the state code is 
is that uh, that broad nature that the city council has to uh, to develop their city, to enact laws and ordinances that uh, to make their city look the way it does. Uh, not every city is going to look the same, and uh, thank goodness, we all uh, have different preferences, and this gives the legislative body a great power to uh, to drive their city in the direction that they want it to go. Um, the last uh, the last slide here for the city council is that. Uh, of things that they cannot do. Um, and we've already talked about this uh, in the past, but we wanted it to have it be here on the slide. Um, the one thing that we haven't talked about is on the right there, uh, they cannot appoint a city or a town manager during that interim vacancy period, which is between the general election to elect a council member and the council member elect begins the council member's term. What that's doing is that is protecting the, the, uh, the sitting council members from being able to uh, take an action when there's an advantage because the city council member uh, in the past would vote against that idea and uh, it would not pass. And so this, what this does is it just makes sure that, hey, uh, the full council is deciding on what happens here when it comes to uh, the city manager by ordinance. Um, the, so now I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, staff and it can look, something like this. Which way do I go? What do I do here? There's a lot of signs telling me I need to go and talk to the mayor on this issue, but it's kind of a policy issue. So do I need to bring it before the council? Uh, there's a city manager in my city. So do I talk to uh, him or her about the issues, or do I go to the mayor, or do I go to the city council? Um, and so it can be somewhat confusing, particularly in a six member council form of government, because much of it is controlled by ordinance, what the city council has taken away or given to the mayor or to the city manager. So let's talk about that first question here. Who do I go to for approval of decisions? Well, the first answer to that would be, do you have a department or a division head? And if so, I would, uh, they are still your point of contact to go to and, and ask those higher level decisions beyond what you were, uh, is in your job description or what you have authority to do. Uh, if you are a department head, then the answer to this question will come down to several different things. One, do you have a city manager? And if not, then look to the mayor's role. And if you do have a city manager, then you will want to go to the ordinances that define their duties um, by ordinance and you'll need to go and look for that. And it won't be easy, I promise. Um, especially if your city has had a city manager uh, since before 2008. Um, but those things should be in, in ordinance, uh, defining what that city manager's role is or defining what those, that mayor's role is and whether the decision that you're looking for would fall underneath the mayor city manager or whether it was retained or uh, taken back by the city council. I know that's not a helpful, a very helpful answer, but given the many different structures that six member councils have, 
and what they've allowed by ordinance or not allowed by ordinance, they're all going to be different depending on your city. Unfortunately, there's not a good answer to that. Um, so the next question here that I'd like to talk about is how do I navigate my job when others, perhaps a mayor or a city council member, are operating outside of their lane? They come to me and say, we want you to do X, Y, Z. We want you to um, take away the fines for this uh, individual. You find them and uh, we want you to take this away. Well, is that now a city council role? Uh, it is not. It is the mayor's role unless it's been taken away by ordinance. And it very well may be that it's been given to the city manager. And so what do you do? The best thing to do is know in your city by looking at the ordinances, knowing what everyone's role is by ordinance. And if it if you cannot find an ordinance, then that means that the mayor is the one that is, is the CEO, that it hasn't been taken away and that they are the ones that have the authority to either remit fines or forfeitures. And, and so those duties will be in flux and you need to know based upon the ordinance uh, who has what duties and who has what powers. Um, now I should mention, if that has been taken, if that power to remit fines and forfeitures has been taken away from the mayor and reserved to the council, then that council member may have, uh, authority to tell you, Hey, this is what, um, this is what I'd like you to do. Now that typically would only come in the form and fashion of city council members being the same as department head um, because it's only a city decision if the city council makes that decision um, unless that city council has given that authority to that city council member as a department head. Have I confused you thoroughly? Well, going back to that quote, it's much like sausage uh, when, when you come to the five and six member council form of government, which is basically uh, most of Utah. So uh, those ordinances will be critical in determining where you stand as staff, where you stand as city manager, where you stand as mayor, where you stand as a city council member. So let's talk about that third question. The third question, uh, what authority do I have in making decisions for the city within my own sphere of influence? I think the first uh, answer I would give you is look to your job description first and foremost. Um, that will help you understand where and what you can do. Um, and secondly, if you would like, say, for example, you've got standards, engineering standards that you would like to see changed and it, the changes that you'd like to make are not contrary to what is in state code. Um, but say it's in addition to what state code. So you're adding upon what is already in state code and what is required by the standards, well, this is likely a policy decision. You are adding on to the requirements for someone to come into your city and engineer, a, 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 you know, depending on what the construction project is, engineer certain things within your city. Um, so this is one thing that you would probably want to take to the council to approve and have them adopt that policy because you're not a policymaker. That is reserved for the city council members. Um, whereas if you've got authority within your job description 
to um, to review certain uh, reports and to uh, act upon those reports and respond to those reports, then I think you're well within your range of, of authority to do so. So that is, uh, that is just the brief rundown of the six member form of council, um, six member council form of government. And uh, now comes any, any questions that you have uh, that we haven't answered. Um, and I'll turn the time over uh, to anyone who wants to ask any questions. And I should mention, you'll need to put the question into the chat bar uh, so, that, so that we can see that. Um, All right, Jared, I see one in the Q&A box. It says, can a city council create a special committee? Uh, Yes, they can. They can create a special committee. Yep, they sure can. Uh, the state reference for this uh, information is in 10.3b, uh, and it's 10.3b 101, um, and the different sections within 10.3b. And there's different uh, sections that um, in the title you'll see six member council form of government. Uh, Scott Pugh, uh, can a council member be over the planning commission and be a voting member? Um, so long as they are not a planning commission member, uh, I guess the question is, what, what do you mean over the planning commission? Um, they can, with advice and consent of, of their council, they can appoint, uh, I'm sorry, the mayor typically appoints, but with their advice and consent um, of who sits on the planning commission, uh, they, they would not be able to be a voting member of the planning commission. Uh, it's, it said a mayor can't veto an ordinance. Does that apply to resolutions also? Um, good question. There are some, there's a little bit of confusion within the code uh, and it's not as clear as I, I would like it to be, but uh, typically resolutions are those, uh, the, the topic of, of what a resolution is does not rise to the level of a code change within the city. Uh, for example, recognizing uh, someone uh, within the city by resolution, that wouldn't be a code change. So typically those things are not done um, uh, within a resolution. If it's changing code or if it's changing uh, policy direction, then uh, it usually should go into a ordinance. Um, if it is a resolution, they're really in the code, there's no function where it talks about vetoing a resolution, simply because what is typically in a resolution is not those items. Um, Uh, Jolene Jenkins, if a city council or mayor is working outside of their lane uh, and it's clearly outlined in ordinance, what is the next step? Good question. Uh, the next step, I think it comes, it, I think it comes down to um, an understanding for them of what their powers and duties are. Um, if they can see within the code and the ordinance that look, these are not within your duties, um, then I think, you know, maybe it's, it's naive of me to say, but I think if, 
if that education is there, a lot of times uh, that will help the conversation move forward. Um, if, if they're acting outside of their lane, um, I think the mayor in a six member council form of government needs to know that uh, the council can remove those powers uh, if, if they'd like and uh, needs to be aware of that. Uh, that those powers of the mayor can be removed, or at least most of them, except those three that we talked about, uh, can be removed. Uh, if it's a council member acting outside of the lane, their own lane, I think, again, coming back to education, saying, look, this isn't, this isn't your lane. Um, right now, this is where, this is what, uh, who staff reports to. Uh, this is what I've been asked to do as mayor or city council member, or I'm sorry, as a city manager, um, and explaining that. Um, but know that the city council really does have the authority to say, well, okay, if you say I'm acting outside of my lane, then I'll bring it to the council and we'll change that. Uh, we'll change that in the next council meeting. So it can, it can be... Um, that that's one way that can be hopefully resolved. Um, I, I, I understand that many times it's not an easy uh, resolve, um, but I think education really helps. The uh, Ken Fippen, uh, what happens if a mayor decides to not sign something approved by the council? Um, you know, that's, that's a great question um, as well. I've seen that happen. And uh, ultimately, uh, that, that function can be pulled from the mayor um, to sign all documents, uh, at least in this form of government, to sign those documents, those contracts that are entered into by the city. Uh, um, and the council can take that away and, uh, and give that to someone else um and so i i so that's that is uh that's the best answer i can give um ultimately when that decision is made by the council the mayor um the, depending on what your ordinance says the mayor uh should be signing it um they don't have a vote whether it's signed or not. That's already been taken care of through the city council. So uh, Ryan Robinson, we had a question about committees and open meeting laws. Our ordinance specifies if the council delegates any duties and responsibilities, a committee would be required to notice minutes. Um, can you provide insight to specific duties delegated? Um, okay, so, so I think this, this, this question comes down to, uh, really what is a public body and the open meetings act and what's required to have an open meeting. And I think, um, we will be covering this in a different uh, in a different webinar, but uh, to answer your question briefly, uh, it really depends on what authority they are given uh, to make decisions for the city, um, and are they using tax taxpayer dollars? Do they do they uh, meet the definition of what a public body is? And if they do, then uh, they would be under the same obligation as the city council to notice, to take minutes, because they're a public body and the Open Meetings Act applies. Um, there are different situations where um, they may not meet the definition and they may not have to, um, but it really comes down to depending on what is in the ordinance uh, that has been assigned to that special committee, 
do they then meet the definition of a public body? Um, Yvonne, uh, if a council tries to remove a mayor's powers, does that require a full six, including mayor's uh, vote? If mayor or one other council vote no, does that make motion null and void? Okay, so that's a great question. So I wanna go back to, um, if we can just go back to, um, right here. Uh, so what, let's see, is this it? Uh, It is, I think that, that was it. So uh, to answer your question, in order to uh, withhold or in order to give, in order to change those uh, functions that a mayor has, it either has to be the mayor and a uh, majority of those present or all of those, even if the mayor says no. So say you've, so you've got a six member council, say four show up. Um, that would be if the mayor, which say that mayor is there, the mayor and the other three vote in favor of, of changing up the duties of the mayor then then that would pass if if say for example uh you've got five members there uh including the mayor and the mayor votes no you don't have all of the other members even though say one of them was gone it needs to be all of the remaining council members so it needs to be all five or it needs to be the mayor and a majority of those present uh, in order to both change the mayor's duties uh, or uh, hire or dismiss a city manager. So, uh, so that is, that is uh, what is necessary in order to, to change. Looks like we are uh, are one minute away. Any any final questions or um, if not, I'll turn the time back over to Cassidy. Great, thank you, Jared, for that webinar. Just as a final reminder, we will be having legislative policy committee on the eighteenth, and I will throw that link on how you can RSVP to that into the chat. And also for you smaller communities, you can use the LAA program as a resource as you look through your ordinances and are trying to figure out what your powers and duties are. So don't forget about that resource and I'll include a link to the LAA page as well in the chat. And again, thanks for joining us today.